الحمد لمن هداني لسنة العدنان محمد المختار وسيد الأطهار. Not so loved the world. I think I know. I, it's revealed to me that if God. Was it revealed to you personally? Revealed to me through my tradition. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm a so member. Of, wait, just go ahead. I'm just letting you finish. So he is. So if God so loved the world, he would not stand aloof, which I think Islam would teach. God is disgusted by what he sees human beings do on life in the world. He gives to them the law through the Quran, to which they must submit in order to obtain a kind of righteousness, if that's fair to say. So and far, I'm with you. And stands back and lets and watches what they do. Okay. My God, as I understand God, is one who so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave and revealed to it true holiness. Okay, the law, the prophets, and even his own son's teaching. Okay. Okay. But that God is the same God that so loves the world that he can't stand back and watch human beings suffer, mm. but becomes part of them, becomes incarnate of one of them, a righteous okay, so, woman named Mary. So I'm going to let you finish first, so then I can speak. Right? So, is that good? So if you believe in a God of love, I think Christianity is the only consistent faith. Okay. And Islam doesn't stand, rise to Christianity standard. Are you, have you made your point? Well, you don't sound like you're listening to me. I am listening to you. No, I, I just don't agree with you. waiting for me to finish. I, I am waiting out of respect. Right. I'm not interrupting you. Well, I'm letting you finish. Yeah. It, it, just because I don't agree with you doesn't mean that I don't have enough respect to listen to you, right? No, I so, understand. So when you say, so, if so you Frank, believe in a... I heard you say... say now, let me, can I speak? Well, I, Go ahead. You asked me a question. Go ahead. Do you want me to finish? I, I didn't ask a question. I, I just asked, my question was, are you done speaking, right? So then I can speak respectfully. Yeah, and okay. I understand you are speaking respectfully. To okay, me, thank you. Not really listening to what I'm saying. I, I did listen to you 100%. Don't well, think this is the really, first... Like, you're not you're... engaging. Let me put it that way. You're not engaging what I, I'm saying. I do want to engage, but to engage, I need to speak, right? Uh -huh. Or should I just listen? Is that engagement? No, no I'm not saying. Okay. Just listen. So when you say that the, if you believe in a God of love, the only consistent tradition is to Christianity, I just totally disagree with that. And let me explain. If you talk about love, if you look at the Old Testament and you look at the uh, punishments and the massacres, uh, you know, if you curse your parents, you're put to death. Uh, you can beat your slaves, and I'm well, sure I you can I, see. Can I? Can I? Can yeah. I speak now? See, this this was the respectful listening part, right? So, so I'm just saying that when you say that, that that I, I disagree with that because when I read the Bible, and as you can tell, I've read it quite a bit. Um, if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he remains alive a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his property. To me, that's not a loving God, because if you, even if somebody is your servant or slave, to beat them, even at the liver day, to death and not be punished for it, to me is not a loving God. Uh, if one who curses his father or his mother, this is an Exodus, I'm sure you know, 2117 here, uh, and he who curses his father or mother shall surely be put to death, Cursing your parents' death penalty, again, I don't agree. Um, if he takes another wife, he shall not be diminished from her food, her clothing, and so on. When you read through this, uh, you find things like the massacre of Amulek, which I'm sure you're aware of. But you're quoting but the Old Testament. Right? Sure, sure, but it's the same so God. The Old is it, is, is, apply is it a different God that revealed the Old Testament? Oh, well, again, unfortunately, sure. we had a conversation Go ahead, but arrived. tell me. Huh? The Old Testament for a Christian, at least a Christian, I'm not a fundamentalist, so... Uh, I don't know. I don't Christian. know what the difference that there is, but okay. Well, a fundamentalist takes the whole Bible and applies it almost like, the, if I understand the Quran, applies it like the Quran. Like it fell from heaven. This sure. is it. There's no variation. It's all inerrant. Gotcha. It's all perfectly consistent. But you don't believe that. I don't believe that as such. Okay. But what I also certainly believe, and the New Testament actually says, speaks about the old wine and the old wineskins about the Old Testament. I do believe that the Old Testament was an incomplete revelation. It's not complete. So what you just read, I could take you to John chapter sure, 6, but right? My, my question to Where you Jesus is... Jesus forgives a woman caught in was, adultery and, and himself I got seems you. to violate all those Old Testament commandments. So, so of was the Old Testament revealed by God? Yes. So those are the laws of the God you believe in? They were the incomplete. Okay, but were those were those the laws of the God you believe in? Yeah, incomplete. Whether complete or incomplete, the issue is... No, that means everything. But you mean those people didn't carry out these laws? I mean, in the that time period, did not receive the full revelation during the time before Jesus. Peace and blessings be upon him. When they were given these laws from your God, was that the law of God? Yes or no? Before Christianity. Before Christ, before yeah. Jesus. I mean, before I'm assuming Jesus, you yeah. believe that 
Of the course. the yeah, same. That was, that was the okay, so revelation. Jesus is God, right? Yes, According to you. Jesus so God. that means Jesus revealed those laws to the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Jesus, as you are saying, is God. Oh, I see. And God revealed those laws to the people of that time. So you believe Jesus revealed that if a person beats their slave who lives a day, there is no punishment. Right? I believe that Jesus, as God, the Word of God, revealed the Old Testament scriptures to the Excellent. prophets, who, like Moses, who wrote them down. Excellent. Case, Excellent. And, so, and so, so this is this is a God of love that tells you that if you curse your parents, you need to be put to death. Well, it's the God of love who hasn't revealed Himself fully to a people. So who are those people that were killed for those minuscule sins, you are saying that's a love of God of love. Huh? Well, I mean, this is interesting. As far as contradictions go, they're clear numeric contradictions, which yeah. you call them Again, inconsistencies. But, but can, can, I, can I finish, sir? I know. If you don't mind. See, but this is the thing, like how I listen to you, uh -huh. but every time you're interrupting me, so just listen and then I'll let you speak. A, a respectful conversation. You ask me questions when I answer No, no, that, that, that's not a else. question. I was, I was about to quote a, a contradiction and you interrupted me, right? But I've been hearing contradictions all along. Yeah. Right, Go okay. Ahead. So if you see Jehoiachin was eight years old when he became king and reigned in Jerusalem three months, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I, I Agree. Okay. It, yeah. And then you see in other verses that he was 18 years old. Same Jehovah chain, same one year. So is that not a clear numeric contradiction? Yeah. It can only be one of the two, right? You can be eight or 18. Uh, so this is the thing. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to explain to your friends earlier. You can explain the, it to me. Okay. The Bible is not understood by Christians as the Quran, I believe, is understood by Muslims. Okay. It is not something that is inerrant. It's not something that has a single author. In your case, so it's not from it's not God is not the author. God participates and cooperates with human authors, to put it that way. Okay, so I want to understand that. You're saying that this is not authored by one author, meaning that there were many human authors who could have contradicted each other in their accounts. In substance, no. In particular cases, like okay. I, I was it with you or with a friend of yours? I brought up the case where in Jesus' resurrection, if you want to go to the New Testament, yeah, one case there's one angel, another case there's two angels. So, so one of those has to be wrong, right? Well, yeah, understood factually, like if we Agreed. stood there with a film and Excellent. filmed it, one, you know, one, one of, of them got it wrong. wrong. Good, uh, we agree, we're, we're, we're making progress. Yeah. I'm sorry? You, you didn't agree, you manipulated. No, I agreed with what he just said, which he said that if there are two accounts that are numerically different, one of... You try, you uh, I'm sorry, that was his him. statement or my statement? No, you were trying to force you... him to agree with you, and uh, as he I'm really didn't, not. You, okay. so uh, let me, you summarize in Let your, me ask the behalf. question. You're interrupting her now. So, I'm friends, sorry, she was that? interrupting us, actually, but it's go ahead. I, I realize that, but so we were... So, may I say something? Uh, go ahead, sir. So this whole thing, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in what Islam teaches about Excellent. certain things. That's the one thing that I wanted to engage you on. Jesus Excellent. is not a Muslim. No problem. I understand you think he is, that's okay. fine, but he's not. And that's what I engaged your your, your people. About. I understand. Since that time, I've gotten from you just a bunch of Bible quotes. This contradicts this. Right. This contradicts that. This is inconsistent. That sort of thing. I get that. That's how you see it. That's fine. But for a Christian, you're not really trying to understand at all how a Christian sees it. So you may have some success here. I'm sure in a secular society like ours, lots of people are looking for God because God made us to need Him. Yeah. And so people are looking. You may have a lot of success, but you really don't seem to understand Christianity or want to understand Christianity very well. So let's leave it at that, okay? Uh, see, I, I, I respectfully listen to you. Day, okay? Can I say something in, in ending this conversation as yeah. well, or is this like a lecture? <laughs> Can I, can I say a word if I you don't mind? the lecture's been on your end. No, sir. no, and the, you see how I listened to you? I didn't interrupt at, at all, right? So my point that I would like to end this conversation, if you like, you yeah, can you stay here if you like. Go ahead. Appreciate it. So as somebody who grew up going to church, grew up to Bible studies, you can see that I have read the Bible and has engaged Christians my whole, I mean, at least from the late 90s onwards. It's not that I haven't tried. And I was not somebody raised in the Muslim tradition. I went to churches before I went to mosques. Let me just explain that, okay? But when I'm going to base my understanding, and as we continuously quote the Bible, on a book that clearly has numeric contradictions, you call them inconsistencies, not me, and I agreed that at least we can say that there are inconsistent when there are numeric contradictions. When we say that God is not the author, 
and some of the authors will give different numbers. One is going to be wrong, and what one is going to be. Uh, I, I'm sorry, you said they're human authors, I said, right? No, no, you didn't hear that again. <laughs> you didn't hear that. See, this is why there we should have recorded. Yeah. Participating in the okay. divine authors. Excellent. So, so again, the incarnation teaches us that God and humanity are united together now in the life of the church. The apostles were joined with the Holy Spirit. They were human beings filled with God's Holy Spirit. They wrote the they wrote those. God did not write those. They weren't automata just writing down whatever the Holy Spirit forced them to write. Gotcha. They go to some of the other passages where they're talking about practical things. Okay. Paul writes, I'm coming to your church and say hi to this person for me and hi to that person and don't forget to do this and we need to collect money for them. Very practical Excellent. stuff. So we don't believe that the sense. New Testament is like the Quran in this Agreed. powerful and overwhelming divine act of revelation. We believe that human beings, sinful human beings, and all the New Testament apostles were sinners, mm -hmm. participate by God's mercy, the God of love, in the life of His Spirit. And that's Excellent. the origin of the Bible. But all we've heard so far is Bible contradictions. We've had nothing theological in this whole conversation. Sure. So, no interest in tradition, no interest in doing Christianity. Just does the Bible have contradictions or not? And if you can prove that it has contradictions, then you've got a kind of a, a lever into subverting Christianity and claiming Islam is superior because your Quran has no contradictions. That's really not a convincing so, approach. So you, you see, you see how I was supposed to be speaking, and then you came in, and then I still let you finish, right? Yeah, but I've been allowed okay. to speak too. No, no, but, like but you, you, had, you, had, you had allowed me to speak, uh -huh. but as I started speaking, you interrupted. But even then, respectfully, I listened to you. I didn't. I, did, I listened to you until you finished. Yeah. If you allow me to complete what I'm saying, with the respect that I'm showing you. Okay. As I said, for me, as a student of, of knowledge who went to the Bible first, when I found that there were clear numeric contradictions, even McCarthy's study Bible tell us that those are copyist errors. People made mistakes. And those are in the Bible that were given. So a book that has people's accounts, one of two has to be wrong, as you had said earlier, that, that there are inconsistencies. Those were your words, not mine, right? Then I do not want to base my salvation on a book where there are human copyist errors, inconsistency, differences. Those are people. People make those kinds of mistakes. I want to base my faith on a divine book that is not the writings of Muhammad, that is not the words of Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. It is the words directly of my Creator. Right? Now this is something that we were discussing from a biblical perspective. If you want to talk theology, I'm more than happy to talk about the core concept. I don't believe that a God that kills himself or his own son is a God of love. For me, a God of love, which is the God that we believe in the Quran, forgives without sacrifice. If you sin, you repent. Adam sinned, he repented. Peace be and blessings be upon him. Allah forgave him. We sin, we repent. Allah forgives us. That's the love Islam shows. That's the love Allah shows. He doesn't have to murder somebody. I, when I was a teenager and when I went to church, I asked this question of my pastor as well, right? Horizon Church, Horizon Church, off of Balboa and Genesee. Evangelical or what? Christian. Well, I mean, I think it's Baptist. Baptist, yeah. okay, that's scary stuff, okay. Baptist is scary? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd love to learn more about that. because I'm, I'm You're Orthodox, yeah. like Greek Orthodox or just American Orthodox? Orthodox. American Orthodox, part of the same church. It's part of the same church. Excellent, excellent. And I love to learn. I mean, again, uh, but they were Baptist. And what they told me is that when Adam sinned, all children were born sinners. I mean, again, maybe I'm... Not, maybe. not the ancient church's teaching, but... Excellent, yeah. good, good. I, I, did, Augustine, so I, I appreciate from, learning from you. This is, this is wonderful to educate me. Thank you. Right? This is what they told me, and me and you can both say they're wrong, and we'll agree to that. Right? They said every child is born a sinner. Right? Me as a teenager, I said, what happened? They said Adam ate from the tree he shouldn't have, so all his lineage is born with sin. I said, okay, how did we make up for that sin? He said, God, until the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, there, was, there were all sinners, there was laws, there was the, you know, the murder of people, all of that. But then God sent himself, which was also his son, all the same. And then we as humans tortured and killed him on a cross. And that killing of God then pays for our sin. 
To me, that makes absolutely no sense. And let me explain why. As a team, can, can I finish now? If there's a lecture here. It's not, but I let you finish, right? If you don't mind, just let me, give me two more minutes if you don't mind. I'm sorry, we have five children waiting for I appreciate it. Okay. Well, I, again, I appreciate the conversation. I would love to learn more about the Orthodox churches different from the Baptist. Is there, is there a different Bible that you use? what you got from the Baptist is this very negative, cross-centered, torturous vision of Christianity that really was not part of the original church. Well, I think maybe you guys should have a conversation with the Baptists and try to work that out. Oh, I do. Oh, believe, we believe do. Me. Right. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Yusuf! So, this guy is coming from this country. Allahu Akbar. Come, come, brother. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We're here at Balboa Park. It was supposed to be David Wood's day to come here, but apparently he chickened out. You know, he doesn't let us, we keep telling him, let us know when you're coming so we can, we can present the books to you. But I guess he doesn't want to be here when the actual books are there. He just wants to make his little hate videos and he's too busy with politics right now. You don't see him making videos about what happened in Abu Ghraib or what happened in Gitmo or what happened with, with what's happening in Ethiopia with the, with the genocide or the Rwanda genocide or South Sudan's Christian uh, genocide against He doesn't want to talk about that. Why? Because he's just an Islamophobe. He's not a Christian. He's not a believer in God. He's just out here trying to debate to make videos for his channel. When we're here with the evidences, he didn't show up. Alhamdulillah, our brother Mujahid, brother Muhammad, mashallah, the da'wah is growing, brother Muhammad, mashallah, last week had a shahada, this week he had somebody that contacted us through email that took shahada, alhamdulillah, brother Mujahid, mashallah, brought all the books, we brought the books, Ibn Kathir, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, because poor David always just wants to Google incorrect websites, we even contacted Darul Ulum Karachi, Mufti Taki Uthmani's Madrasa, about that website, and I have the email from them saying that they got nothing to do with that website, so his website is fake, as David Wood is fake, but Alhamdulillah, we've got all the books here to show him, and he won't show up, but I'm going to make this video so at least he can see it, here is Tafsir Ibn Kathir, the actual Tafsir Ibn Kathir, not uh, some online Googled uh, unknown website. And if you look at the hadith that he was trying to promote, that of Umar ibn Khattab's pact, which he knew was weak, but still quoted because he just wants to make those videos. If you look in the takhreej of it, it said, Fi sanad, yani in the Senate is Yahya ibn Uqba, and who a kathab, he is a liar in the chain. This is why he knew that this was a fabrication. And that is why it says, قال ابن كثير رؤية ولم يقول ثبت أو أو صح. And that's why ابن كثير. This is if he had read or if he had asked, he would have known that that is why ابن كثير did not say that it is proven or established. Rather, he said it was reported to show the weakness. And if he had taken the time to actually research or read or ask, then he would have known. If he just wanted to know the issue, he could have picked up the clear Quran by Dr. Mustafa Khattab and in the note it talks about jizya, it would have been clear. But he didn't want to know the reality, he just wanted to find things in books that he doesn't even have the ability to understand. And when we brought them to show him, he didn't show up. Tayyib, but I do my homework even though he still hasn't brought his. And David, you still have the homework which you didn't bring to bring about the slaves of the Prophet ﷺ, the number with senad, with chains, we can check, and the fact that they were not taken out of war. Because when I told you they were taken as prisoners of war by other than the Prophet ﷺ, you said, oh, were they in war with Africa? So now you, you still have your homework that you didn't bring next time. I want you to bring your homework, inshallah ta'ala. But I did mine, so I'm going to present all of it here in case you don't show up next time. This is Ar-Rahiq, Al-Makhtoum, the, the Sira book. If you look at the Sabab for Tabuk, because I told you it was because of the Romans immensing an army against Medina. And you were like, no, no, where's the... So I brought you the evidence. I will read it to you in English. And this is from Al-Mubarak He says it showed an unjustifiable, the Romans' opposition towards the Muslims. And we have mentioned their opposition by killing the ambassador of Rasulullah Sallallahu Al-Harith Ibn Umair Al-Azdi. By, by, by Sharshabil ibn Amr al-Ghassani, the, the Arab Christian who was assigned by the Romans who killed the ambassador. This is why Tabuk, it wasn't about going and capturing land. Why don't you read up, right? This is Mubarak, but you can get it in English yourself. And this is why, and this is page 422, 423. It says, Caesar, uh, the, the king of the Romans, mustered a huge army of Byzantine and pro-Roman Ghassanid tribes to launch a decisive bloody battle against the Muslims. There's your evidence, bro. Where are you at? Right? 
But if this is a later book, I even brought you earlier books, earlier from the Asas. Yani this is a, a Sira Nabawiya, Min Dua Al Masadir Al Asliya, of, of Sheikh Dr. Mahdi Razq Allah Ahmed, where he goes back to the original sources. And here again, the Sabab of the Ghazwa of Tabuk. He says here that Al Waqidi has mentioned Al Maghazi, one of the earliest books, Ibn Sa'ad in his Tabaqat and others, uh, that, that Harakal had jama'a, a jama'an, yani a huge army, min al Rome, wa qaba'il al Arab from the Romans and the, and the tribes of the Arab in order to attack Medina. Here it is right here, and look at the references from the earliest books of Sira, Sanadan, with the chain of narrators here. We could have showed you, but you decided to chicken out today. Now, I'm going to put a challenge to you so you can be prepared, right? There are things in the Bible that I want you to then prepare and answer us as we bring you evidences, not just opinions, evidences with chains that can be, that can be checked. So go do your homework, come back and talk to us. And in the meanwhile, Alhamdulillah, the da'wah is growing. I want all the brothers and sisters to continue to share the videos, continue to subscribe, comment, like, so we can continue the da'wah. And as every week, even yesterday, Alhamdulillah, here in Balboa Park, we had a shahada. A video coming soon, inshallah. Every week we're getting shahadas, Alhamdulillah, sometimes two, three a week, Alhamdulillah. And we ask Allah to continue to grow the da'wah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. أرجو من الله العلي غفران كل الزلل ورؤية الرحيم ووجهه العظيم وصحبة النبي الطاهر الزكي يا رب صلي أبدا على النبي أحمد وآله وصحبه وتابع لهديه مغرد الحمام وسبح الأنام مغرد الحمام وسبح الأنام